Hello, this is Janet Michael. In addition to hosting The Valley today each weekday at noon on the River 95.3, I also produce podcasts, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new podcast series in partnership with Lord Fairfax Community College. Having provided higher education and career training for the past half century, LFCC is tightly interwoven into the fabric of the Northern Shenandoah Valley and Piedmont regions. Join me every week for conversations with current and former students to hear their funny and inspiring stories as we learn about their journey to higher education, the role that LFCC has played, where they are now, and where they plan to go. We'll also talk to current and former professors about their experiences and best memories of LFCC over the past 50 years. Get every single episode as they're released on our website at theriver953.com under the podcast tab, or you can subscribe for free in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, on Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for LFCC Stories. Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Thursday as you are listening to the show. It also happens to be the day we're doing the show. It actually is Thursday. Yes, it is live in the studio. So that must mean, if you recognize that voice, I am across the desk from Lieutenant Warren Godsnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. How's my favorite Sheriff Lenny doing? I got to ask. Uh, I believe he's doing well. I haven't spoken to him today, but I did speak to him yesterday, if that counts. <laughs> um, but I have to take care of a quick piece of personal business that I didn't tell you about. Ah. Uh, tomorrow, the 25th, Yeah. my youngest turns 21 years old. Wow. So um, That's a big deal. She's in Richmond right now, so she might listen to this later on the podcast mm-hmm. or on the website. But in case she does... I always had this thing when my daughter's birthdays rolled around and I was on the radio. Always, not only did I wish them happy birthday, more than once they got a phone call on the air, and and, you know immediately when they picked up, I'm like, "Hey, we're live on the air," so that they know. Yeah. So I haven't done that in a while, but yeah, 21, and uh, I I don't know. Here I am at 35, and I have a 21 year old. How does that happen? Yeah, that just seems weird. I don't know. So there, happy early birthday. All right. I think that is fantastic. Yay, that makes you an official empty nester because now she is legal in all aspects yeah. of everything. I mean, I, you know, I, and they're making everything legal anymore. So it's like, <laughs> what, what's it matter? It's, it's legal anyway. What difference? Unless does it you're make? under 21. <laughs> well, I am glad that you uh, are continuing our live shows. I, I'm glad to be here. It's a beautiful day outside today. I did notice a few things on the way here. I, I made a traffic stop on the way no, here. No, you did not. I had to. What? Uh, no, just a gentleman. I mean, I'm not going to get into details. We don't air our dirty laundry on the, <laughs> on the air, airing dirty yeah. laundry. Uh, but no, I, I'm traveling along in the right-hand lane, and a nice uh, vehicle passed me in the left-hand lane. I'm like, that's okay, you know, and then I started. That's what the left-hand lane is for, started passing. Started following, and we kept speeding up, kept speeding up, kept speeding up. Once we got up to a certain speed, I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, and, and so we had a quick chat. Uh he was on his way to the golf course. I think he might have been late for his tea time. Uh, but we had a little quick chat. But, yeah, a beautiful day. And I can tell you what, Janet, the the nice weather, it brings out something in a lot of motorists. Yeah. Uh, you see more of the convertibles. We've talked about the motorcycles mm-hmm. before and such. But it, it, sometimes I think the weather plays a key in how people drive. I, I don't have any statistical data. I don't have any scientific data. Uh, hypothesis to share or or that i've uh, looked into but it, i've noticed well, in does. my career you get out and you're in the car typically you have the windows down the sun is shining and you don't pay attention to the actual vehicle and the speed and things like that sometimes anymore because you're just enjoying the day and the weather and being out well and i can tell you yesterday uh we weren't doing any type of special enforcement But we were out uh, in the area of Route 37, uh, and we had three drivers in triple digits. What? Three different times, three drivers in triple digits. We had one that was 99, and it was just like... I don't even know if my car goes that fast. Well, and you don't need to find out. I really think I might. I think I might need to know. Well, then you need to go to a (laughs) uh, Summit Point or another paved speedway. I was going to say Winchester Speedway, but it's dirt. I don't think your car... I wonder if I call up Nick at Winchester Regional Airport if he'll loan me one of the runways. 
because that's private property, right? You can't you can't do anything to me if I want to see if my car went a hundred on a runway at the airport. <laughs> Can I not do anything to you? <laughs> well, if wait, you have permission. If I do it in Warren County, you definitely can't do anything to me. <laughs> well, there you go. You, you don't have to worry yeah. about me, but watch for that drone overhead. <laughs> you know, that, um, but no. three different people yeah. in triple digits or near triple digits. Yeah. Because that's a little ridiculous. I mean, I can yeah. see doing five, maybe 10 miles over the speed limit because you're listening to your music and you're just not paying any attention. But yeah. triple digits is kind of a big deal. And, 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 you know, when we talk about this and and people are like, look, everybody speeds. That's a true statement. Right. There might be a, a few people out there that, that truly keep an eye on that speedometer. Uh, but even with them, depending on the incline, you know, once in a while your car may crip. Even one mile an hour is speeding technically. Well, and if you I want keep to go an by, eye on the speedometer, but I'm still speeding. I'm still doing five to seven over the speed well, limit and, in most cases. And when I say one mile an hour is speeding, I in no way mean that right. that should be an enforceable action. But due to the the strict interpretation, anything over is speeding. And so when someone says everybody speeds, just like you just said, mm-hmm. we've talked before, what's the magic number, guys? There is no magic number. There is no magic number, <laughs> folks. So when you say, well, I, I keep it at nine, because I, <laughs> I know the cops aren't going to stop me for less than 10. <laughs> folks, there are officers, deputies, troopers out there that will stop you for less than 10. Yes. Uh, if you're traveling through a subdivision, and there are kids out playing, and it just rained, it just snowed, or whatever, and you're four, five, six over the limit, you can find yourself stopped. So, again, <laughs> the, just there is no magic number. <laughs> but we'll say, people, I, I only keep it at five, you know, and, and the person I stopped today admitted, I thought I was only like five or six over. <laughs> and I'm like, you were when you first passed me. But, but then you kept speeding up. <laughs> and so um, when it comes to this speeding issue, it's a matter of we truly are talking about the safety of the person driving, mm-hmm. any of their passengers, any other vehicles traveling around them or coming towards them on a two-lane road. It's not a matter of, well, it, it's it's my life. I'll do what I want. I've had someone say that to me about not wearing their seatbelt when they were stopped for more than 20 miles an hour over the limit. Well, it's my life. I don't believe anybody should tell me what I, what I can and can't do. And I'm like, hey. Don't you wish sometimes you could just reach into the car and smack him in the face? This is why I could not be never. a police officer. This is why I couldn't be a law enforcement officer. I've never wished that. <laughs> never. Um, but the thing is, when, when they say something like that to you, you take a moment and, and you're saying, I'd like to reach in and just... Yeah. No, I reach in verbally. And I'm like, well, you know, sir, here's the thing. What if the other vehicle involved that you hit is the one that has the fatality or the children that are hurt or and worse. And they are obeying the law and, and they are doing and you what survive. they're supposed to. Yeah. You survive because it's your life. You do what you want. So when it comes to being on the roadway, we have a responsibility to those around us. You want to take the risk. You don't want to wear your seatbelt because currently in Virginia, one of the many things that you cannot be stopped for. Now, it's still a violation. Right. Let's be clear. You just can't be pulled over But you for can't it. be pulled over for just not wearing your seatbelt. So if you want to ride around without your seatbelt because you know there are people uh, that didn't make it because they couldn't get out of the car, there are people that would have died if they were wearing a seatbelt. And some of these other stories that go around, I can give you, for every one of those, I can give you a thousand stories yeah. where people survived. But that's beside the point. You want to do it, do it. But when you then, on top of that, commit another violation that you can be stopped for, don't blame us when we give you the summons. Because, again, I'd rather you look at me sideways, you call me what you want, you you tell your friends what a bad, bad man I am. I'd rather have that conversation than the knocking on your family's door in the middle of the night and telling them that you've died in a car crash and that you're not coming home or knocking on someone else's door. Yeah. Because during uh, your little maneuver, when you weren't wearing your seatbelt, you ran off the right side of the road, you overcorrected, and when you did that, guess what? It jarred you from control of the vehicle because you weren't belted in. And so now you find yourself laying across the console. No one's driving the car when it comes across the median and hits another car. You survive. They don't. These are the type of crashes that happen, folks, and people call them freak accidents. They're not freak accidents. No. They're preventable. There's something that someone did or didn't do that could have been done. So, yeah, when it comes down to that, it's your life. You know, you're going to do what you want. Do it in your own home where it's just you. 
And you make a really good point because I have someone in my life. Um, she used to call herself my mother, but we don't. That's not that's not the case anymore. But she had that was her. She never wore a seatbelt. Her sister passed away in an accident because she was knocked out, mm-hmm. and she took that to mean that she would have survived if she hadn't had her seatbelt on. Well, she was knocked out. The seatbelt or no seatbelt, she wasn't coming out of that car right. before it exploded and caught on fire. Those percentages are so much lower than the percentages of people who have walked away from crazy, crazy accidents. Well, and I can tell you, I, I'm, you know, I'm hoping for vacation. Uh, can you explain next that month. concept to me? Because it is, I tried to have one a couple of weeks ago, and it just didn't. I, ended I up have my fingers week. crossed. Uh, <laughs> when 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 the missus suffered her broken ankle, uh, two small trips got canceled. A weekend camping trip and a, and a small trip to the to the beach all got canceled. So we're on the mend. We're out of the cast. We're off the boot. Uh, <laughs> you know, a couple more weeks, and I'm hoping to be getting on a plane, going somewhere, and and nobody knows my name other than Mr. Gosnell. Would you like another? Uh, <laughs> you know. So I'm hoping for that, but I'm, for that for this trip, there'll be flying involved. Ah. And I'm I'm you know, they say it's safer than driving. Well, they're absolutely right. But at least when I'm driving, I'm in control. You know, I'm the one behind the wheel. You know, when I hear the pilot come on there, Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Hey, is it supposed to do that, Bill? You know, it's like I'm always listening for that when they don't know they got the hot mic on or something. Never flying with you ever. Never. That's just not going to happen. Trust me, I'm. I'm I'm not myself usually. I'm rather quiet, and I'm watching everybody. No one's going near any doors, no windows, no handles. People probably think that you're like an air marshal That's undercover fine. when you're on That's an airplane. That's fine. <laughs> if that keeps them from acting up and we get to where we're going safely, I'm good with that. So here's a question for you before we go to break. Is you know you've come in and done the radio show with me in your off time when you were not on duty, mm-hmm. but you still had your weapon. Mm-hmm. What do you do when you go on vacation? Do you take it with you? Do you lock it up and leave it at home? I mean, are you always in law enforcement mode even when you're on vacation? The answer is, we'll we, answer that when we, we come back. We have to go to break. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break when we come back. We're going to continue our conversation with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. I have a list of actual things that we're going to talk about. The new cyclist law, July 4th event, school's out. So we'll talk about some of that when we come back. He's going to give me the answer to what I just asked him during the break. So hang in there. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? you come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land-grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick money chat and get the information you need to take action. Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We and then there's this one time that I oh <laughs> wait, we're back on the air. Okay. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Shush, shush. I have to shush you almost every other show. Well, you wouldn't enjoy it as much if you didn't. Because uh, yeah. you've you've got to have I that. Get, I do kind of get a kick out of it. Yeah, you, you like to feel like you're in charge. I feel like I shush you and somewhere in a car or in his office, Lenny giggles. And that's that's my goal. Uh, that's my ultimate go. win. <laughs> We are back in the studio live today with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. And one of the things that you said you wanted to talk about today when we were having our conversation is a new cyclist law, which is interesting because we get a lot, you and I both, mm-hmm. get a lot of questions about that when we open it up and say, hey, Gos is coming next week. You got any questions you want me to ask him on the air? A lot of people have Our area input. is still uh, a popular cyclist mm-hmm. uh, or cycling enthusiasts area. 
uh, due to the rural nature of some of the areas that we have in Frederick County, uh, here in Warren County. I mean, you got to admit, we're, we're all growing. Uh, subdivisions are popping right. up. New businesses are popping up. Uh, new complexes. Uh, but we still have plenty of these rural areas where people who want to just go out and put some miles uh, on the bike, they do so. And we have a few events in our area. Uh, one is uh, family-oriented, uh, but it also has categories. You, you have a youth category, you have an adult category, and then you have a, a, a you call it professional. I yeah. call it professional, but, uh, you know, these are the guys that ride in line and are riding like 40, yeah. 50 miles an hour for 50, 60, 70 miles. Yeah, and for the record, I will never be well, in that category. You know, for the record. Uh, uh, no, we are not talking about you and bike shorts. We are moving on, so no, tell me about the new cycle. The bike ride we did here <laughs> back for uh, Real Country 95.3, uh, my morning show partner at the time and I, Brad Hilke, we rode over 70 miles in a day What? Uh, for charity. We started here at the radio station, and what we did is we rode to each McDonald's <laughs> here that was owned by the, the, the Naranjas, Naranjas Corporation. And we would stop. We would do like an hour live broadcast. People would come in, make donations. We had tickets to give away. But it all looked good on paper. But I'm telling you, by the time we made the trip, down 522 and 50 and into the city of Winchester, and we were hitting that last one in Stevens City. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, so those people that can ride that far, my hat's off to you. <laughs> but I have done it before. It's like the hole-in-one. I can say I've had a hole-in-one. There aren't many people that can say that. But, yeah, with this in mind, there have been some tweaks to the law starting July 1st. It's been a matter that where uh, cyclists on the roadway – are not to ride two abreast. Right. Okay, side by side. Uh, they're supposed to be in, in a single file line. Well, the law now will allow them to ride two abreast, uh, and it will require motorists who encounter these cyclists to stay at a safe distance behind them until they are able to change lanes safely and pass them. The cyclists do not have to move to the right into a single file line and allow you to try to squeak by because what was happening here is whether it was the motorist that might misjudge or had a slight movement of the vehicle while passing or the cyclist might have the slight movement, the cyclist and the vehicles were coming together far too often during these passing maneuvers. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be treated much like motorcycles. All right. And normally when motorcyclists ride two abreast they don't ride side by side they're not a little a, catty corner yes from you, each other. You, yeah. you canter a little bit so that you have a little reactionary space anybody who's ridden a, a motorcycle knows what i'm talking about here um it's going to be the same way with the cyclist that they, they can ride two abreast but if it were me i'd canter a yeah, little bit usually stagger the front it. wheel of the other one is at the back wheel of the first and, and that yeah. way if anything does go amiss while someone is attempting a pass. Again, you have a little bit of room to, to maneuver. But uh, some of the questions we had were people were like, what if it's a double yellow line? And it's like, look, because they were like, so now you're telling me I can pass on a double yellow. <laughs> if, if I passed a slow car on a double yellow, you'd stop me. And I absolutely would. Um, that's a no passing zone. What you're doing here is you're overtaking, all right, not a slower motor vehicle. See, I was getting ready to say that. Too. But a, a slow-moving okay. vehicle. <laughs> Go back to our, our rural comment. We were talking about uh, back in the day when we had mm -hmm. more agricultural in our area, more agriculture in our areas, more uh, orchards, more farms, uh, uh, more uh, cattle and such. It wasn't too uncommon to see agricultural equipment, tractors, mm -hmm. trucks pulling hay hay wagons and such. I still get on, that on Reliance Road. And you so, can, yeah. but not as much as we used to. And, you know, they'd have the slow-moving emblem or they'd have the flashing lights um, or, or go up to Pennsylvania, to Amish country, uh, and, and, and where you have the horse and buggies and they have their slow-moving emblem. You know, what it's designed to do is to give them a little more protection, but to also give you motorists who are now sitting back there going, I can't believe I'm stuck behind this guy. God you know, told me to leave extra time. He didn't tell me to leave an extra three hours. <laughs> there you go. They're trying to give you the opportunity to, when it's safe, get around them. And when we say when it's safe, we mean when it's safe for you, the motorist, 
and. to do so and safe for the cyclist. You want to argue, well, I pay taxes to drive my car on this road, not to ride a bike. Well, folks, we all pay taxes, or we should. Uh, and I'm telling you, the small amount of your tax money that is going into all the roadways that are covered, and if you've looked at how much it costs to uh, create a roadway, maintain a roadway, you know, it's not a cheap endeavor. I'm pretty sure most of these cyclists are also paying taxes. Yeah. So this comes back down to what do I like to preach, Janet? I'm testing you. I didn't even give you this. Safety over convenience. There you go. See, you are learning after all these years. <laughs> it's only taken me five. <laughs> Safety over convenience. If it's going to slow you down a little bit, then yeah, I understand. You know, it, making that stop today on the way here, I was glad I left early enough to do that and not have to rush to get here. But there was no way that I could allow the unsafe right. behavior I was seeing to go, to go without yeah. checking it just so I could conveniently get here and have time to prep for the show. So it's the same kind of thing. Safety for everybody involved. So yeah, if it's a double yellow line and you're coming to a hill crest, maybe you should wait. Yeah, a little if you're bit. About coming and you're up like, on a turn, and maybe you're like, you should well, wait. Dad, the guy's going to go slower going up the hill. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, probably. That, so, right. <laughs> so it, it, I understand what you're saying, but again, you know, wait till you get to that hill crest. Make sure it's still safe. But the law that we're talking about does say if a lane is available, you're to move all the way into the lane. You can't just straddle that yellow lane, uh, yellow and, and, and so that you go by the cyclist within a couple of inches with your yeah. right side. Okay, that's a violation. And remember, these these people probably have GoPros and all now, especially <laughs> the ones that are really that into are die it. Hard, you yeah. know? And so they're gonna come forward and that GoPro is gonna show you straddling that line going right by them, them having to move to the right to avoid getting hit by your side mirror. And you know what else it's gonna capture? Your tag. So yeah, in that situation. So then that cyclist comes to the sheriff's office and says, What, I wanna make a complaint, and then what happens? Well, depending on what their video shows, uh anybody has the uh, right to try to seek a charge against them. If they feel their life was put in danger uh, in our office, it would be a matter we would probably watch the video, see if the tag is a valid tag, uh, maybe reach out to the registered owner, see who was driving that day, see what they have to say. Uh, but if that cyclist is, is uh, adamant, about wanting to have this person charged and they're willing to come to court to testify, then, then we would escort them down to a magistrate's office, allow them to fill out a criminal complaint and swear to the facts that they are true, and a magistrate would determine if there's enough there, enough probable cause, to issue the summons or the warrant. At that point, it would come down to us finding that driver or registered owner serving that summons or warrant, and then it's between the two parties when it comes to court. We would just be a third party right. facilitating the the wheels of justice yeah. turning slowly <laughs> uh, on the 10 speed. And if the cyclist wasn't necessarily interested in going that far, you use it as, a, as an educational moment to have a conversation with that yes. driver and explain yes. to them what we just talked about. Yes, that would be our course of action. Now, what if I have a dash cam in my car and somebody is speeding? Can I use that video and call you up and say, dude, this guy in this car just flew by me. I want you to go find him and pick him up and arrest him. No, no. <laughs> a little bit harder also. You know, your dash cam, unless it's got a radar built into it, we're not going to know how fast the other uh, vehicle's yeah. going. And when it comes to videos, you know, how fast were you going? You, you know, need to know that. that but is, no, that that's is what not I'm saying. <laughs> You'd be surprised about the visual uh, <laughs> discrepancy that you can see, you know. Well, that's true. All right, so let's move on to July 4th. It is right around the corner. Everybody in all five counties is having some semblance of celebration well, yeah, and after, fireworks. After the year of COVID and being cooped up, we uh, are expecting, uh, if the weather is good, that uh, the crowds will show up for these events just to be outdoors, just to partake of some of the other goodies. You know, the funnel cakes. Hopefully mm -hmm. someone's going to have funnel oh, cake. Oh, somebody better have a You know, cake. the ice cream and, of course, the fireworks. Um, so what we want to remind folks is remember, look ahead. If you're living in a small community, if you live in down near downtown front Royal, or you need to travel through downtown front Royal on July 4th, if you live in Middletown or need to travel through Middletown, Janet on July 4th, which is a Sunday this year, um, be aware that 
some of these areas are going to have their parades back into mm-hmm. effect. And some are doing it on the 3rd. Some are doing it on the 4th. I think a few are even doing it on the 5th because yeah. that's the actual observed holiday federally, I guess. So, And I don't know what this word holiday is. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen people take Fridays and Mondays <laughs> off and say this. It's a holiday, and I'm like, yeah. holiday. Much like I was to you earlier about vacation. Yeah. I, what is this vacation you speak I, of? I hear of it, and it was a movie with Chevy yeah. Chase that I remember. But So you kind of have to be on high alert and plan again plan for ahead. that kind of stuff. I don't leave my house anymore. Ever since y'all wouldn't let me go back to my house, I just don't leave my house that day. Well, <laughs> and I think that's the wise decision, and it wasn't us. That was your jurisdiction. But, yeah, um, Middletown will have its parade. Uh, I believe it steps off at 5, mm-hmm. and then – uh, after dark, they'll have their fireworks. Mm-hmm. Sharando Park is having their event. I think their gates are opening at 5 o'clock. Uh, we'll be funneling people in there uh, using the Sharando High School entrance. Mm-hmm. And then we'll use uh, Sharando High School and the park uh, exit to get vehicles out Which more quickly. Which makes so much sense. I'm so glad they started doing that way back in the day. Yeah, and but the, the thing is, keep in mind that when those events are letting out, If you're just now trying to get to where you want to go or get through, traffic's going to be heavy. And and that's the thing. I mean, we could talk firework safety, but I leave that up to the the fire marshals. marshals. Um, I can tell you when people ask, you know, what's legal, not legal? If it goes into the air or explodes with a report, with a, a bang... Yeah. Those aren't legal. And if you live on Church Street in Middletown and you are putting those things off at 11, 12 o'clock at night, I am going to knock on your door. So brace yourself. I have puppies now. You want to talk about don't a Don't nobody want to hear that. There's a firecracker. <laughs> a different All right. Kind. We've got three minutes before we have to go. See, this is why it shocks me that you still want to do these shows live. Because when we're live, we have to hit certain times and we got to be done at a certain time. When I'm pre-recorded, you could probably squeeze an extra five minutes out of this show. Yeah. We do just enough to get people what they need to know. <laughs> Uh, Before until we the become next too time. annoying there and then we go. they don't want to turn anyway. So school's out. That was the last thing on your list. Yeah. Uh, I believe now officially in all mm-hmm. uh, the jurisdictions here in our area, school is out. Graduations have commenced. Uh, and, and so another reminder, uh, kids are going to be out and about. Now, a year ago, uh, they were already out and about to a degree because of COVID. Right. But now, you know, it's it's truly summertime. <laughs> it's Mel Gibson screaming freedom yeah, from Braveheart and, and kind and of. Uh, more <laughs> places are opening up. So places that you weren't seeing traffic over the past 9, 10, 11 months, you're going to see traffic again. Pools, mm-hmm. okay, playground areas. Uh, if you live near any of the entertainment type uh, businesses, uh, the drive-in you, movie theater is a perfect example there in, in Stephen City. And I think uh, that's already open, I yeah. believe. Yeah, and we always know when it's getting to be dark and we're coming home from Winchester or something, slow down when we get to even before Southern States because they're going to be lined up alongside of the road. And Well, and, and the good thing is we're, we're into that longest part of the yes. day now where yeah. you can look out your window and it's 845 in the evening and you're like, I can still see out there. I know. I mean, it's so much better than getting dark at 4.30 in the <laughs> afternoon. But with that, remind everybody that, again, those are those are especially the hours, those evening hours when it starts to cool down. You know, it's been a, a long, hot day, and it's time for little Joey to go back home from Billy's house. <laughs> and so he's going to be riding his what? His bike. Uh, you know, and so remember those residential speed limits. Uh be watching for those sudden movements coming out from between parked cars or even as you're traveling through the community from from uh, coming from one yard to the other, mm-hmm. you know, because these younger children, you know, it, whether it's a remote control toy that's got away, whether it's the old fashioned ball it's that's just rolling across the street, a pet, you know, anything. Uh, we just ask that you pay a little m- more attention uh, for our our little citizens who are going to be trying to enjoy some of this extended daylight. Meet you back here in July, fourth Thursday of the month. We'll talk more stuff. We will. All right. We are going to wrap up today's conversation with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. It has been Traffic slash Public Safety Thursday here live in the studio. Tomorrow is United Way Day. Elise and I are going to have a conversation with Lori Noakes from the Blue Ridge Housing Network. So meet me back here for that just a few minutes after noon.